Yeah, so uh, Wizards of the Coast uh, put out some sort of previews a couple of months ago for their new starter set, effectively, for uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Uh, but this one's a little bit different. So the D&D Essentials Kit is a sort of upgraded version of a starter set that is going to be available in Target in the US right now, if you want to go and get it right now, and it should be available everywhere else in the world in September. So there's a little bit of exclusivity for the Americans at the moment. But... This new starter set takes a little bit of a different approach to um, the, the the last one that was available for 5th edition in that it doesn't necessarily have pre-generated characters in it. It has rules and everything for you to get started and make your own characters, which I thought was an interesting twist. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also set in the same um, town, almost frontier town, as the last starter set. Uh, so if anyone's played that, it's set in the world of uh, in the town of Fandelva, which is in uh, um, uh, the Forgotten Realms. Um, and this sort of carries on a story as well. So if you've got the starter set and you've got this one, you could merge them together to create a larger adventure, which I thought was really, really cool. The idea that they talked about in the interview that's actually part of that um, new story, which I'll make sure to link in the show notes, um, is all the idea of, like, it's a bit like the Wild West of um, the... Uh, uh, of the Forgotten Realms. So there's lots of mercenaries out there, there's lots of crazy people that are trying to look for gold and stuff in down in weird um, lost mines and temples and that kind of thing. So it's got a really sort of broad base for you to go adventuring in. The essential set also comes with a whole bunch of extra stuff that the starter set didn't come with. So you've got maps uh, of not only just the local area of Fandelva, but also the larger world as well. You've got cards for all the monsters and the magic items that you're going to be fighting and finding, which is pretty cool too. And they've also included rules for um, lower player count games. Um, So one of the big things that they wanted to really deal with is the idea of uh, a DM and one player. Maybe it's a parent and a kid, for example, or just two friends or, you know, partners that want to get stuck into a game together. They've now got rules in there for one versus one uh, games because they've added in this thing called companions. Uh, And companions act a little bit like an NPC, but with a little bit more flavor and a little bit more sort of like flesh on the bones. They did some sort of beta testing with the idea uh, earlier in the year, but now the rules are like properly included in this set. And they will also be available as a PDF later on, later on Mm -hmm. as well, which I thought was really cool. Um, But it just means that if you've, you know, if you haven't got a lot of people around that want to play D&D and just two people want to get stuck into it, you've got some really cool stuff there. That, For example, if your player's playing a wizard, then maybe their companion is a fighter that's going to sort of help them in their quest and stuff like that. So it's just a little bit of extra sort of role-playing advice and stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, it seems like a really good set for getting stuck into. I hoard starter sets for role-playing games, so I'm probably going to end up picking up this one. I've already been thinking about getting the Stranger Things one, and I really want to get the Rick and Morty one as well, which is really cool. But um, yeah, this one looks really good. And importantly, as they have said, spoilers, I guess, but there are dungeons and there are dragons in this. So it's a starter set that fills all of the quotas that you need for the game. (laughs) I agree. (laughs) It's also very handy having that 1v1 if somebody's completely new Mm -hmm. and they've never played before because it allows you to to play test it with one person rather than trying to sit there with a crowd of cats around the table all wanting to talk at once and do it while you're constantly flicking through a book and then somebody's talking about what they've seen on TV and somebody else is talking about the football and nobody's paying attention and it can be very disheartening. Mm. It gives you a chance to learn how to play. I like the companion bit because if anybody's played any um, computer RPGs like Baldur's Gate or um, Star Wars Knights of the Republic, Possibly those as well. I've never played those, mm. but but you know the the RPGs that are based on the wizard system. Mm. So Knights of the Republic okay. was based on yeah. the D twenty ah, system. Um, Baldur's Gate never were. You played essentially a single player, mm. but you had companions that you could swap in and swap out, and you could tool them up to a certain extent and and work out their progression as well. So you, I'm imagining it's more or less that brought onto the tabletop mm. where yeah. You, yeah. you've gone. Well, this is what I need. So here's how I'm going to tweak them when they level up. Yeah. yeah, see, well, I have to wonder, could you use that companion system for if someone doesn't turn up to a session? You know the way that happens sometimes yeah. if someone can't make it for a couple of weeks and all of a sudden they're falling behind in the XP and stuff. If you were able to actually tune that companion mechanic so that the person could actually run kind of on autopilot when they're not there and maybe still be earning XP? It shouldn't, yeah. be, it shouldn't be a problem, I wouldn't think. Well, one of the cool things about this is that the, the companions, as we were saying, 
as you were saying, they, they, they do level up and they get more experience. So you're invested in them as characters. They're not mm. just kind of like a throwaway cookie cur- cutter character or that kind of thing, which is really cool. Mm. Although Chris Perkins did joke in the video that if, you're, if your companion dies, you can just go back and get another one, which I thought was pretty fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, it seems like a really cool idea. I think it's something that would be really fascinating to see done in a couple of different ways. You could either have it that the, the DM role plays as the companion mm. or the player just sort of like, says what they want them to do and they're more like a silent guardian kind of thing i thought pretty good or if you've got you know maybe two people maybe the more experienced player plays as the uh, the companion which is like that slimmed down rule set and then the new player plays as their character so you've got someone sort of guiding them on their quest as well which i thought would be really good mm-hmm. it's also good if you want to try and do like a lot of one shots because if you want to try and make characters that have got a very cut down rule system you could just effectively play as these companions to be honest and you still get a pretty good sort of game out of it as well which i thought would be really cool so yeah. see i would definitely throw a companion into any group you were running just because mm. if you want to bring someone in late you can just yeah. say okay well we've already got someone that's running they're they're up to date with everybody and mm-hmm. here you go you can run with that now yeah i mean what well, I, I think this is it's a great way it's a great thing to see Wizards of the Coast coming up with lots and lots of new ideas for getting players into the game. Because obviously we've got a lot of the, the starter sets that are themed towards a lot of TV shows and, and, and that kind of thing, which are like a great sort of like hook for people. Mm. But for people that are just excited by the idea of fantasy adventures, maybe they've read a lot of books and that kind of thing, just having things like this essential set is a really good way to get people stuck into the game rather than just saying, you've got to buy all these three core books yeah. and then play the game. A lot of the rules are free as well online. A lot of the core That's rules it. are. So. so there's 180 people page download yeah. on the wizard site um, which I think it only contains probably a dozen or so monsters so it's not the it full does, yeah. the, the full remit of monsters but the full rules are in there mm. so that could be you go from this to that uh, to expand and then after that you can pick up the books mm. or it yeah. means if you're playing with a group um, having the, the DM's guide and the monster manual great but telling your players that they should each really have a copy of the player's guide. Sometimes people aren't going to be able to spend the money on that, but they can go and download that 180 page thing for free and go, well, at least I know the rules. I know what I should be looking at. I know where I should be min-maxing that type yeah. of thing. So yeah. Also, if you're, if you're bringing someone new in, even running a, a single intro session, 1v1 could be good before you actually yeah. drop them yeah. in with the main group. Because if you're trying to learn and you're in a group that's been role playing for years, yeah. Again, people are you know saying what they're doing, talking to characters, and you have no well, real idea what's going on. There's, there's been a thing that we've done uh, in previous D&D games we've played is that before everyone dived into the session together as a group, what I did is I sat down with players or the other DM sat down with with me and uh, you know our group, and we played through what was called our prelude. So mm. we played through just the, our first level as you know those level one characters with, for example, a companion or an NPC or someone who was tied into our backstory, this would be a great way of doing that with like proper mm-hmm. solid rules for the game rather than just an NPC character. And then from there, you went through level two as a group and sort of three, four, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So yeah, these are just really cool ideas for getting people started in the game and, and stuff and telling a little bit more of a narrative thing and stuff. So cool. Yeah. More for yeah. that.